Hi everybody, welcome back to the Eastfield Gunroom YouTube channel. And just before we start today, huge, huge thank you once again to everyone who's been liking the videos, subscribing, sending us requests, commenting. Really, really pleased to be doing what we're doing and we hope we're bringing you stuff that you want to see continuously and keep throwing those review requests to us and we will do our absolute best to bring them to you. We're getting viewers from all over the world, so you know, welcome wherever you are, a lot from Canada, the States, Australia, certainly a bit more um, from Scandinavia, etc. the last few weeks. So really pleased to have you on board and we hope that we are cheering you up with our reviews weekly. Okay, so we're taking a bit of a break from my beloved Miracuse this week and we're going back to the Italian giant Beretta. Now, yes, there has been several reviews of rare and collectible guns, um, we've also done some more mainstream stuff. This is a gun that needs no introduction whatsoever. The Beretta 687 EEL has been a huge, huge favourite, certainly in the UK. I've no doubt worldwide since its introduction back in the early 1980s, about 1982 or 83. Um, despite what you will hear in other videos, it says they've only been around for a decade, actually been around a lot, lot longer than that. The 687... Historically, the Breta 680 series action, which is anything from an old 680 back in 1977-78, right up till the modern day, silver between 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, anything on the 680 series platform. Traditionally, 686 was scroll engraved and 687 was game scene engraved. Now, what they did with the double E -L, -L, which stands for extra, extra, luso, luso in Italian, which means extra luxury, twice. They pulled out all the stops. They went above the EL Extra Luso model, which was a 687 with, you know, slightly better wood. We had side plates and a bit more engraving. And they went to town on the wood, town on the engraving, and they produced one of the, without a doubt, most successful, certainly on the game shooting scene, uh, guns of the of all time, in all fairness. So what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about the 687 double E double L. Back in 1982-ish, Beretta were only, I've said this before in previous videos, Beretta were only really starting to get on the map in terms of over and under shotguns. Although they've been manufacturing for quite a few years from sort of, I think about the 1950s, a lot of the stuff up to the early 1980s when the 680 was born, the Beretta couldn't really shine a light to other manufacturers like the Browning, like the Winchesters at the time. The 680 was a huge, huge step up. They still manufacture it today. Classic case of if it ain't break, don't fix it because hugely, hugely popular worldwide. Like I said, from the very basic sort of Silver Presume 1 models right up to this and to the classic, which is the next one up from this, which is the start, certainly in the UK, of the premium range of Beretta over and under shotguns. So we're going to start with the action. It's brushed finish. Whereby with a normal 687, it would be a box lock. What you've got in here is you've got long side plates. Now, as well as the standard sort of traditional floral scroll all over the trigger guard, around the bottom of the action on the borders, you've also got a very, very nicely executed game scene. Now, when the guns were first available, they were actually completely hand engraved back in the early 1980s. Um, obviously, things have moved on in terms of engraving processes and technology so now a lot of it is kind of the mixture of acid etching laser etc but these guns are still hand finished and if you look closer here this is a 2000 i think nine or ten gun we've got a really nice game scene of a pheasant taking off um you know catching his mate up probably probably a 36 gram five doing the work following be closely behind them and on the other side you've got sort of um woodcock and again it's just a really nice traditional looking game scene with the trees, the branches. Hopefully you can see that from the close-ups and the photos that we're gonna we're gonna show you in this video. Now, what it kind of did is it elevated the 680, which was a popular gun, you know, built largely to a price, to a different level because it looked essentially like a side lock. Now it's not a side lock, it's a side plate, but if you're standing 20, 30 yards away from someone on a peg with one of these. You don't know they're not shooting a gun that costs 10 times as much. And I think that is one of the reasons that the dual e has been so popular because it's kind of the quintessential, in my opinion, Englishman's game gun because 
it's got all the reliability of the 680 but you've got luxury walnut nice engraving and it just absolutely looks the part yes when you go on a day's game shooting it's not about what the gun looks but also there's a there's a degree of pride of ownership and you know enjoying the day and enjoying what you're shooting with so they came out early 1980s initially only in game specification so game specification would be six mil narrow rib auto safety and at the time certainly only fixed choke because mortar chokes were still you know being developed particularly by Beretta, didn't come out for a few years after that. So you would predominantly be advised like a 28 inch game, very fast handling, grouse, water up game, etc. Then they developed into a multi choke version, multi choke game. There was a sporting version throughout the years. We've had 20 bore in both game and sporting. They even manufactured them in 28 and 410, which you can still buy today. So it covers all the bases of, I'm going to use the word, it's kind of a mid-range gun in terms of what you can pay for a shotgun, but they just look brilliant and they are absolutely bomb-proof. So this particular model, which is quite interesting, actually a sporter. Now, I've picked this for the reason that here in the UK, these aren't haven't ever been hugely popular versus the game guns. Because the game guns are lighter, um, Beretta is known for, without a doubt, durability is the word. If you go out in all weathers like we do in the UK, Berettas are just harder wear because of the manufacture of the barrels, it's molychromium. They're just, they're just an easier gun to own in a country where the weather is not the best, particularly the game shooting season where we run from September to January, February even, and in ultimately you're going to get rain snow whatever other manufacturers you know i'm a huge fan of japanese guns but they are made of recycled steel and they're probably just not quite as hardware and as a bretta if you're going to be out there in all of the elements and that's one reason i think these guns are so popular so this one's a sporter primary difference it's got a wider rib that's 10 by 8 it's got ventilated barrels it's got an adjustable trigger it's got a palm so it's a little bit heavy and the reason i picked this is because again i've said in previous videos here in the UK now, we want to shoot taller birds, bigger cartridges. And you get to the point where that sort of seven and a quarter, seven and a half pound game gun is just a bit too light for those bigger cartridges. And also with the eventuality, we talk again about the whole lead ban in inverted commas. Um, if you're going to shoot higher performance cartridges, a heavier gun is just a better option all around. So just going back to the gun itself, 680 series action, so very, very nicely engraved. Um, I believe that certainly these days Beretta use a number of different engraving processes and uh, the hand finishing. And you, if you've got a double E double L, you will have an engraving signature on the underside of the trigger. And it's normally an engraving school or company that is in partnership with Beretta in terms of this. I talked briefly about molychromium barrels. Beretta, apart from being the oldest manufacturing company in the world, in my opinion, produced some of the best barrels because of how hard wearing they are and the cold hammer forging process that they still use today to manufacture these barrels. This gun, in sport specification, available in 28, 30, 32, also available with a scroll engraving. Now, again, I've said this on previous videos, you get a lot of people that shoot clays that don't want game birds on the gun. As daft as it sounds, the argument there is, I don't shoot game, I don't want a feather from a gun. So they did do a scroll version. By nowhere near as popular because the, my argument would be, I would imagine that the sales in the UK are sort of 80-20 in terms of the game versus the sporting. But there was just those, those extra options and, you know, scroll one, certainly not as commonplace, but they are available out there. In terms of the feel of the gun, this one weighs eight pound and it feels very nice. Again, because it's got a palm swell and because it's a competition gun. In my eyes, competition guns should have a palm swell because I think that is, you know, a prerequisite in my opinion. The game guns can be a little bit slimmer in the grip. Again, it's all to do with weight reduction. Now, there are literally thousands and thousands of double E Ls out there being used week in, week out. Again, particularly with the, the game shooting guys, pairs are quite commonplace. You know, so again, some people will just believe that no one's got a pair of double E double L's. There's a lot out there for people that go game shooting, double gunning, grouse, pheasant, whatever. 
And it's such a good all-rounder without spending a huge, huge amount of money. I mean, to put this into perspective, you know, you could buy one of these for the cost of a couple of three days pheasant shooting. Well, ultimately, you've got a gun there that's going to last you a lifetime with very little grief, if any, that is just built to last. And that is the thing with the 680 series. It is without a doubt, in my opinion, bulletproof. Shooting school uses them all the time. Coaches use them because they just know they're going to go out, put cards in and pull the trigger. I've never in my nearly 30 years in the trade actually seen a Beretta break a firing pin. Yes, I've seen them break mainsprings. I've seen the ejector shear, but I've never ever seen them break a firing pin. And that is testament to the build quality of these shotguns. Now we talked about how nice the engraving is and it's, you know, it's all over. It's the side plates. Even the screws are engraved in the game scene, which again gives you the you gives you the feel almost of a, a, a seamless join. You've got the the scroll on the underside with the the woodcock thing, um, and then moving on to the wood grade three European walnut is what is standard specification on these guns. Again, wood is very subjective. You know, one person's taste is completely different to another one's. I can remember in the past where I've had a gun with very light wood and I've thought, God, I'm, that's no, no one's going to ever like that. And someone's fallen in love with it just because they want to be different. I think in the UK, we are very preoccupied with dark woodwork, which is absolutely fine. This one, very, very nicely figured. You've got a vacant oval, which again, you'll get on all double E double L's. Again, it just shows you where the gun is pitched in terms of the market. People who own these, again, largely game shooters, it's all about the pride and they want some sort of form of customization, which is where the, the oval comes in. Uh, and again, with the pairing with the one and twos, etc. And they're just brilliant. They're just absolutely brilliant. Brett, I got it absolutely right from day one to market a side plated version of a gun that is worldwide, you know, unbeatable in terms of the mechanics, in all fairness. Schnabel 4N is standard. Like I said, you can get a 20 gauge, you can get a 28 gauge. And this is one of those guns that when people start shooting, I can remember dozens of people that have said, well, I don't want to spend a fortune because I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy it or how long I'm going to shoot for. And inevitably, they would start off with a standard 680, 686, 687. But this was always the goal. This was the aspiration. One day, I'm going to have a double E, double L. And people tend to buy you know if you buy a, a particular brand of car and it doesn't give you any problems and you get in it and you drive a hundred thousand miles in its lifetime the chances are you're going to go and buy another one of those cars by the same manufacturer and it's no different with shotguns once you've got confidence in something and you go out and you, you know a lot of this game shooting is psychological you perform with it you're going to buy another one and that's why so many people start off with a 680 and then they end up with this kind of dream gun in terms of the 687 double E double L. There's hundreds of them out there. Whatever you want, short barrels, long barrels, fixed chokes. They also do left-handed versions. You can buy a left-handed sport with a left-handed palm as well. And one thing I will say is in terms of shotgun manufacture, the Italians do tend to put quite a lot of cast on their stock. So if you're a sort of bigger, broader person, they can be better suited to you. Um, rather than something like a browning, which can be a bit more neutral kind of cast. As you'd expect, presentation is everything. So you've got your nicely figured woodwork, fine checker in, schnabel end. They come in a nice presentation case. And although they've changed, they haven't changed hugely since 1982. It's just that the game scenes have been refreshed because again, they're just, they're just so, so good. I would think that most people that own or shoot a 687 double about are probably never going to buy another gun because it's got everything you want. It's got the reliability, the durability in most cases, um, even if you've got a, a fixed choke gun at quarter and half, be no problem for standard steel. And you're just never going to wear it out. It looks superb. Yes, they bring different models out, but in all fairness, it's just a slight revamp on the game scene. The chokes have changed. This one's particular, this particular gun is Optima choke rather than Optima HP. So it's bored at 736. Um, and this was an interesting gun from my point of view because I believe in the UK they were never hugely popular in the sporting specifications because the balance wasn't as good 
as the competition and you know the high end pedigree competition which was the DT10, which we will no doubt be looking at on this channel sooner or later. So I feel that people prefer the DT10 because the feel of it, the hand in the balance. When they bought this gun out with the Optima chokes and made the barrel slightly lighter, it certainly changed things and it became a much more uh, a much more viable proposition for someone who wanted to shoot competition clays but wanted a higher end Beretta. And this is it, you know. Like I said, without a doubt, an aspirational model, something that people always think, I'm going to get one of them one day because I love Berettas and I've started off the journey. You might start with a 686, 682, and there'll be a couple of guns along the way. But ultimately, people want to end up with this because it just looks fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Unbeatable build quality, durability, and it looks as good as some guns costing three, four, five times as much. Interesting case in point, some people refer these to these as a diamond pigeon. Um, it's a bit sketchy. If you go back 20 years and look at a catalogue, I think it probably does say diamond pigeon. I think that was simply to differentiate the fact that the base model was the silver pigeon. Then they did an EL, um, which was slightly lower grade wood, a bit less engraving on the action, but still a side plated, which would be extra luso, where there's extra, extra luso luso. And the thing with that is that was called a gold pigeon. So again, it just sort of helps people understand where it is in terms of the range. And that is pretty much it. It is a gun that's got a huge place in my heart. I've sold and seen many, many, many of these guns with very, very little or any issues in the last 30 years. If you want a gun that's an all round that will do absolutely everything, it will go on a simulated game day, it will go uh, on high pheasants. I mean, you could argue with something like a sport of the weight, you even take it while fouling. Look no further. Bretta 687 double double L. Not a diamond in the rough, but an absolute diamond in the gun industry. Any question about this particular gun or any Bretta 687 double double L, please comment below. Get in touch. Details are on the screen. And if I can help in any way, I will. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.